Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the County Seat. I'm Chad Booth. I've got a question for you. Have any of you hit a chuck hole this winter driving down a county or city road? I have. And as I best calculated, I've got about a $90 alignment bill in front of me. So the question I raise is, what does it take to keep the roads maintained and how much do I as an individual citizen have to contribute? Well, we're going to give you the answer to that question a little bit later in the show as we cover the topic of gas tax. Let's start our conversation, though, by talking about what the current tax is, where it's led us, and what some of the solutions are that the legislature is going to look at. Here with that report is Derek Dowsett. Freeways, cross streets, interstates, and scenic byways. Our modern world is built on the ability to move from point A to point B as quickly and easily as possible. We use roads to get to work, school, vacation, and errands. But even for those who don't drive, food, gasoline, the basics of life, all arrive at our door via a road of one form or another. Transportation is more than just a roadway. It's the, you know, it's the roadway, it's the trail, it's the sidewalk that you kids walk to and from school or you go to the grocery store on, it's transit options. To keep up all of these venues of transit, the Utah Department of Transportation, your local county, and the cities across the state are constantly maintaining and improving the Utah roadways. Some things are as simple as a pothole repair. Others involve huge construction projects that can cost hundreds of millions of dollars over years, even decades. In theory, our current gas tax raises most of the money to pay for these roads, controlled by the county, known as B roads, and city streets, which are known as C roads, along with the state highway system. Transportation taxes come in a variety of different ways, but in the simplistic uh, format and, and the larger pot that we get comes from a state gas tax and what we call B road funds. So it's a portion of which uh, the state collects and then they split with the cities and the counties and the counties get B road funds and the cities get C road funds. So we get the B road portion. And on average, the last few years, Davis County receives about a million dollars. One of the challenges that cities and counties are facing the last number of years is the dollar doesn't go as far as it used to and expenses are going up so uh, those funds are having to be um, added to uh, by general fund dollars which then takes away from other services that the citizens of the county or city are uh, hoping to have or expecting to have. In the last couple of years, stakeholders in Utah's transportation system have identified the needs of transportation improvements statewide, reaching out to the year 2040. Their findings indicate that there will be an $11.3 billion shortfall in meeting the needs for transportation. Currently, the gas tax in Utah is 24.5 cents per gallon, where it has been for nearly two decades. The problem is compounded in that most cars are getting much better mileage than in 1997. So the consumption per vehicle has gone down, while the number of vehicles wearing out our roads has gone up. Still, the legislature has to this point been reluctant to be the entity that actually raises the taxes on gas. And by default, the counties and cities have had to fill in the gap. To date, counties have had to be creative to make ends meet, borrowing money from other uses and funneling it into road repair. In Tooele County, commissioners recently decided to return some of their paved roads to gravel to cut down on the maintenance costs. But for urban counties, that's not an option. The final decision is currently in the hands of the state legislature to decide what the future of Utah's roads may look like. The legislature has considered a number of options, settling on five they feel might work. They include raising the tax from 24 cents per gallon to a higher fee, changing the gas tax to a percentage instead of a fixed amount, converting the tax to a sales tax on fuel, thus requiring all users of gas and diesel to pay the tax. Currently, agricultural users, boaters, and others do not pay that tax. 
Yet another is to give the cities and the counties the option to raise taxes on a county by county basis. And finally, raising the general sales tax to fill in the projected shortfall. Certainly with falling gas prices, it might be a, uh, a more digestible option this year to raise the gas tax with uh, falling overall cost of gasoline. We can certainly support it as we've done in the past, but the state legislature is not going to want to raise taxes any more than a local commissioner would. At the end of the day, and we'll see what the legislature produces, but it, it may end up being that you know, there's a few extra pennies per gallon or whatever other uh, facet that, that, uh, that they come up with. It, it, it may cost a little bit more to, to uh, use those roads. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Thanks, Derek, for that report. We will continue our conversation and delve into the issue of some of the solutions and what the mood and sentiment is in the state legislature at this time for raising the gas tax. We'll be right back on the county seat. A couple great things about the Uinta Basin. One is it's still small, it's community. It makes you feel like when you go somewhere you know everybody. Well you know your neighbor and your neighbor knows you and you can trust each other. People look out for one another. I grew up in the Uinta Basin and I think that it's a good place to raise a family. So we packed up our three kids and here we came to Uinta County and what a great place it was. It's not too big, it's not too small. And, and it has a lot to offer that you just don't get in the big city anymore. There is a place where young and old make connections, where kids feel like grown-ups, and grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast, where wonder is universal, and laughter second nature. There is a place where friends find a future, families find each other, and feelings find their home. There is a place. Welcome back to the county seat. We are discussing today the gas tax issue that's had a lot of press time. Hopefully in this half hour with the background we started with, we should be able to paint a clear picture of the challenges we have and some of the solutions on the table. So joining us for our discussion today, Senator Kevin Van Tassel, Utah State Senator from District 26, Lincoln Schertz, who is the Director of Government Affairs for the Utah Association of Counties and Representative Johnny Anderson, who represents the Utah State House at District 34. I would like to start the conversation with uh, discussing basically the five most talked about options, which are uh, raising the flat tax, indexing it either to the CPI or uh, consumer price index or to the price of gasoline, um, doing a, an increase in registration fees, uh, adding a sales tax. I think those cover probably the things that have had the most, conver oh, local option. So um, of, of those five proposals, what is the climate in the Senate for this this year? We finished caucus yesterday and uh, I took some time and talked about our transportation needs and what we are looking at. And it, and it really comes down to, I think as a body, everyone has agreed that, you know, there is a problem, we need to fix that. How we get to that is going to be the big issue. Uh, as I looked at that, the group of body, I'm just trying to decide where I find 15 votes. And, uh, and I, I don't know if there's gonna be one that's gonna win out over all the others. There's probably gonna be a combination of things to get people happy. I know we have a lot of excess funds of what we budgeted, 
but we're still lacking money to maintain and take care of our class two roads. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the issue that kind of ran through in caucus yesterday is that, you know, we need to look at that. Plus the locals have some issues. How we get to there will be a lot of work and discussions in the next two to three weeks. Johnny, what's going on in the house? We want to do something about the existing cents per gallon fuel tax so that it, it tracks better with the economy so that it, we, we don't have to continue taking general fund sales tax dollars and supplementing the transportation funds in order to have a transportation uh, system. Um, there, also, uh, there was also a great deal of comfort expressed over providing local governments um, options to be able to solve their own problems. So, you know, looking at, at taking the existing cents per gallon fuel tax, turning it into, you know, something that, that would resemble a, a sales tax on fuel, um, with some floors and ceilings in there. We, you know, we, we don't want to put something in place that, you know, if all of a sudden the price of gas were to go back up to $3.50, that, that, you know, the taxpayer would be hit, you know, exceedingly hard by that. So, so it's the idea of, you know, having a track with the economy, look, look a little bit more like a sales tax, but, but have floors and ceilings that help, you know, make sure that we have stability in the funding. Well, from the Association of County standpoint, I think the biggest issue is we're maintaining a lot of miles of road throughout the state of Utah. Collectively, between states, cities, and counties, it's about 45,000 miles of road that we're maintaining throughout the state. Just at the county level, we're maintaining 23,000 miles of road of county road. And with that, we have $45 million, which sounds like a lot of money. But when you do the quick math, that's about $1,800 per mile per year to maintain our road system. And if anyone's done an asphalt project lately, $1,800 doesn't go far when you're talking about filling the pothole and maintaining a big piece of infrastructure. I would imagine that doesn't buy more than about three feet of a road. Well, and Chad, just to put that in, in greater contrast, we're also talking about another million people moving to this area within the next 20 years. And with that, we're going to be building new infrastructure. So not only maintaining the old infrastructure and making sure people can still get to Moab, can still get down to Lake Powell, can still enjoy the recreation in the state and things we have to offer, but also building new infrastructure to accommodate the growth we anticipate. Well, one, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, that's why it's so important to address this situation this year. I mean, we may look and say, oh, we've got a, you know, a huge uh, tax surplus of which, you know, none of it is intended to go towards transportation. And we may say, well, these problems are, are years down the road. But if we don't start to, to, you know, put in place mechanisms to solve those problems, to address those funding issues today, they become a lot more expensive down Absolutely. the road. And so it does not make sense to continue to push it off because we're afraid of upsetting the apple cart. Well, I think the issue is, the other issue that as Representative Anderson just talked about is, we can look at our own information that we have on how some of these roads are reacting to the, our current policies. We haven't got a lot of time. Mm. In four or five years, we start losing whole roads, complete rebuilds. And most of those are in rural parts of the state. Uh, some probably in the more less populated, but when we lose those, our costs will go up significantly. And uh, it's just one of those things we've got to address. It's one of our, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of our most important issues, being a rural guy, because they're just, we just can't continue where the, we're at. In the name of fiscal responsibility, a study commissioned by the Salt Lake Chamber of Commerce and a large portion of the business community that's also supporting investment in transportation has said, a dollar we spend in preservation today saves us $10 in reconstruction next year. Mm -hmm. So for every dollar you spend in preservation, you're gonna save six to $10 in reconstruction. So really, it's looking at a system that we've spent a lot of money maintaining that and making sure we're fiscally responsible and doing that at the lowest cost we can. Yeah, and since this hasn't been addressed since, what, 1997 was the last time the fuel tax was adjusted? Well, we've for, been for BNC roads, it really goes back to the 80s. I think that's fair, yeah. But we've been putting more and more general fund sales tax dollars into the transportation system and relying less on the user fees that are intended to fund this. Which means less money in education, yeah. which means there's far less money to run the corrections health and human services, everything else that people expect of our government. And the other issue that we continue to see is that uh, I, I've went back and I've looked the last three, four years, our gallon usage is flat at the very best. Uh, in in two, uh, 2008, when gas prices dropped like they are now, we had a little spike of about $100 million, but it wasn't permanent and we'll continue to see that issue now. And so I think, you know, this is something we can it's pay me now or pay me later, 
but the payday's coming. Uh, well, the projections uh, that have come forth that pretty much everybody agrees on is that we are going to have an 11.3, I think it is, billion dollar shortfall between now and 2040, which sounds like it's a long ways in the future, but it really isn't. No. Uh, how does that break out per year? How, how well, short are we each year? It's close to, it's between 400 and 500 million dollars a year from now until then. It's a tremendous amount of money, but again, if we refuse to take any steps this year, if we refuse to, to you know, offer options for local communities to solve their problems, refuse to do something about the existing gas tax, that what is you know, four to five hundred million dollars a year right now will eventually turn into seven or eight hundred million dollars a year, the longer we put it off. That's absolutely true, and people are expecting different things in transportation. The roads we build in the 70s aren't the same roads we're building today with sidewalks and bike amenities and lane separated transit and the other things that we're doing today in our metropolitan areas as well. Some of this we have to do too to address air quality Absolutely. with the with the coming expanding population. Sure. Uh, it, I mean that's got to play a role in this as well, does it not? Yeah, Absolutely. Con congestion's going to lead to even poorer air quality if we don't deal with it. Excellent. We were going to take a break right now. We'll come back and continue our discussion on transportation right here on the county seat. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Fall. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. What's the story of your life? What chapter are you on? Did you happen to get married recently? Perhaps you found your lost puppy at the animal shelter. Or you're taking an art class at the senior center. There's that flu shot that kept you well last season. And don't forget the museums and historical sites your family loves. And all the fun you have at the county swim center. County services from search and rescue to maintaining roads bring tremendous value to each of our lives. We're the Utah Association of Counties, helping you build the story of your life. Planning your next conference or corporate event, the Davis Conference Center offers 70,000 square feet of flexible meeting and exhibit space, plus high-tech audio-visual services that will make your event a success. Whether you're planning a training, meeting, company retreat, wedding, or large convention, let the staff at the Davis Conference Center help you arrange your next event. Located east of I-15 in Layton, call 801-416-8888 or visit davisconferencecenter.com today. Welcome back to the county seat. We're talking about gas tax, a big issue in the legislative session right now. Uh, I, I do want to uh, express some of the concerns that I've heard. Uh, there have been people at county level government who've looked at the local option. They've said, yeah, well, if you're not going to do anything on gas tax and it's sitting here like it is, we've got potholes, give us the local option. On the other hand, the, those very same people are highly concerned about the fact of saying, well, why, are you, why is the state legislature making us be the bad guys that raise the tax? Because we're going to face our constituents, they're going to be upset, and, uh, and we'll be the ones that have to raise the tax, not to mention the bleed over. Guy raises a tax in one county, people start driving to the next county, and then he's got more of his constituents mad at him. So, you know, let's, let's talk about the, the local option and how that interfaces with the state. Sure, and what's the saying? Those who refuse to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It's been almost 20 years since we've done anything about fuel taxes. If we make it, you know, something about, well, the legislature's unwilling to do it and, and we don't want to be the bad guys, if, if everybody is, is continuously concerned about what they're going to face with their constituents, then nothing's ever going to get done. So. I think it's one of those things where we've got to come together as, as elected officials at all different levels and you know work on a solution that's going to solve the problem. I think the other issue is, is that the local entities and governments know what they need and what they'd like to accomplish. 
And I'm not sure that the legislature needs to be negotiating those things with the cities and towns and the, and the communities. We have some, we have some rural counties that there's, if we do a local option tax gives them almost nothing. And they kind of need to be figured into this procedure as well, how we're going to take care of those. And the three, the, the counties and the cities uh, are in the best position to try to help shape this policy. Good. Go ahead. It's absolutely, it, it can't be the Hatfields and the McCoys. I mean, we've got to be partners in this, and when I say partners, it's not just cities and counties, but also partnering with our state allies in the state legislature. And I think local governments have realized that, that it's gonna take a partnership and all of us exerting the political will to do the dirty thing, which is raise taxes. No one wants to do it, but I think we've all gotten to the point politically that we realize that not doing it will be a bigger problem down the road than doing right. something today. And, and, and that being said, look, the legislature has issued the challenge to counties and cities and transit to say, we don't necessarily want to be the ones to dictate how to solve your problem. Come to us with the solution that works. If we're looking at, you know, a quarter of a percent increase in sales tax that can go towards transportation, then, then we would like those three groups to decide the best way for those dollars to be split so that we have a comprehensive plan, something that's meaningful, but something that, you know, if people aren't complaining later that the legislature said this is what you have to do, we want, we want information from these folks. As Senator Van Tassel said, I think it gets very difficult from a legislative perspective to have one solution that fits Daggett County or Uinta County and Salt Lake County who have very different needs. Figuring out the transit system and how we're going to address that issue in Salt Lake County is a very different issue than the basin where they're trying to figure out oil and gas and mining and the impacts that the trucks are having on the roads out there. So giving the counties and the cities the ability to work together, come up with a unique solution to their county, I think is something that we've encouraged uh, and something that we've asked the legislature to, to recognize the differences within our communities. And I think it's also one of the things in our transportation we had in December transportation meeting, we discussed the fact that even the locals need to continue this will not solve all of their problems. They cannot just get the new money and forget about doing what they've been doing. Because to get that number that we're trying to reach, it's going to take continued commitment from their general funds along with the additional resources. And, and, and that commitment was, I believe, made at our That's transportation committee that, that, that cities and counties would continue to invest general fund dollars into transportation if we can provide more options to make up the gap that still exists. Yeah, absolutely. I just think the viewers need to understand that, you know, this transportation thing is large enough that all we're trying to do is get caught up and not, it's not going to relieve things, it's, but it's going to help make things happen that will make life more meaningful and easier living in our communities. If you got, get caught up in a traffic jam or a congestion, and you lose 20, 30 minutes, and you multiply that by 10,000 people that's in that same thing, that's a huge drag on our time and our abilities. Very good, we're gonna take a break from the county seat, continue our discussion on the gas tax. We'll be right back. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Bryan Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit cedarcityayl.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic Southern Utah. Landscapes as diverse as the people who venture to find them await. All you have to do is find a place to begin. Moab, Utah, in Grand County, where adventure begins. Let's be honest, you don't know much about Beaver County. Well, let me tell you about it. It's the birthplace of outlaw Butch Cassidy and inventor Philo T. Farnsworth. Some of the best skiing in Utah is at Eagle Point. You've got camping, Canyon Breeze Golf Course, Crusher in the Tushers, Beaver Territorial Courthouse, Snowmobiling, Renewable Energy, Pioneer Car Show, Squeaky Cheese, Ghost Towns to Explore, Best Water in the Country, Paiute ATV Trails, Old Frisco Kilns, Horse Racing, Hunting, Fishing, and it's a good place to live. Beaver County, mountains of fun. I could tell you more, but why don't you come and see it for yourself? In 
a place that is beyond words. There is nothing to be said. Except, take your time in Bryce Canyon Country. Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today has been gas tax. We've covered a lot of ground uh, in the short time we've had, and I just want to talk about final thoughts. There are obviously some things we've missed. Kevin, we'll start with you at the end of the table, Senator. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. There's a, you know, it, sometimes we we project ourselves out there that we've got this huge thing going on, and this is a big impact to me. So I took some time and calculated the average driver in the state of Utah drives about 12,000 miles a year. They get 25 miles to the gallon. The cost of that gasoline tax to supply the road is about $114. Now, I'm a little different, and I, Chad, I think you're a little different. I drive over 50,000 a year, and I only get 20 miles to the gallon, and I'm $645 a year that I contribute. And, uh, and so when you really look at the actual, it's a tax and we're taking money, but the return is a bargain to the average drivers of the mm -hmm. state of Utah. Absolutely. The reality of it is for the average driver, it's about the price of a Diet Coke a month, about two bucks on an additional five cent tax. I think people have got to realize, you know, the federal government's financial situation is, is in horrible shape. We're getting fewer and fewer federal dollars for transportation. Those dollars are less stable than they've ever been at any time in, in the history of, of the, uh, the Transportation Trust Fund. Um, we do have a responsibility as, as a state, as state taxpayers, as Kevin or I are on what I like to call the, the board of directors of this corporation. We've got assets that need to be addressed, assets that we own as citizens. And I think the worst thing we could do is make the decision that we're just going to let those assets crumble because we don't want to deal with the problem that exists right now. Lincoln, your final thought. Absolutely. I mean, the one great thing about the Utah legislature is it's got to be one of the most accessible legislatures in the country. And with that, it's not controlled by lobbyists. Make your voice heard. The legislature starting on Monday. They're going to run for 45 days. Uh, go up and talk to your representative. Hopefully you realize that the transportation system we have is an investment we've made, something we should continue to invest in for our economic prosperity. But make sure your voices are heard, make sure your concerns are expressed, and be a part of the dialogue. That's the biggest thing that I could ask. The most important thing I want to stress is that you, the citizens of the state, need to understand that it's going to be ten times more expensive to maintain these if we don't start now. And we've got to pony up and be responsible and have this dialogue with our elected officials so that they can move ahead because they're trying to respond to you. Thank you for joining us on the county seat. Gentlemen, thank you for uh, being here today. We appreciate it when you invite us into your home. We invite you to watch our program again online and share it with your friends on social media. We'll look for you next week on the county seat. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch the county seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.